Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back again. So today we have a very interesting topic to discuss. We will discuss planets in 11th house from your ascendant or maybe from Venus. Yes, it's the planets from Venus, not from the ascendant. So many times when you are seeing this series, you think, oh, it's the first house. No, wherever your Venus is from there, you count 11 houses. And in astrology, you always remember, you take that house as the first house. Okay, so wherever your Venus is, you count that as the first. And from there, you count 11 houses. So <clears throat> the 11th house from Venus is a very fascinating house. Unlike uh, the other houses, uh, some of them too. <laughs> <laughs> but what is the 11th house in general the, from the Lagna or from any house? The 11th house uh, from the Ascendant is generally known as the Labhasthan, which fulfills your desires. It's the uh, fulfillment of hopes, wishes, desires, aspirations, wants, uh, needs, whatever you might say them. So the 11th house is a very fascinating house because it is, uh, as per Jaimini Rishi, it is one of the houses of punishment. Okay. Uh, but why is it that it's the house of fulfillment of desire? I mean, it's it doesn't seem to match well, right? Well, the reason is because whenever your desire is fulfilled, you are punished in a way that you get a new desire and you have to work very hard for it. Okay, That is why it is also known as the house of punishment. And Jaimini Rishi... Uh, says this is Tano Tanah Dandahara. Okay, so it's Danda, it's punishment. <clears throat> so which means if you read uh, the Bhagavad Gita, no, Manashashthani Indriyani Prakriti Sthani Karshati, the living entity is working very hard to fulfill his uh, material desires. Okay, day in and day out, day and night, day, night, morning, evening, afternoon, dawn, dusk, all the time. So therefore, whenever you have planets, in the 11th house they will fulfill your desires but they will also plant new desires okay therefore it's very peculiar that a planet in the 11th especially if there is a jalatattva planet in the 11th house from the lagna uh, it can give multiple marriages multiple affairs which means a person is getting married and then you know he is unable to maintain his commitments and then he or she is looking for somebody else okay because the 11th house tends to make things come to you generally or people come to you okay so similarly in this case uh, as you know this is a sequence from pla for planets from venus not from the ascendant so a planet in the 11th from venus just like 11th from lagna can help you uh, achieve fulfillment of venus uh, but it's not as simple because uh, whenever you are talking about planets uh, from Venus, you should not neglect uh, the planets from uh, the ascendant. Okay, So for example, uh, if you have a planet in the 11th from Venus and somehow your Venus is in the 8th house from Lagna. So Venus in 8th house from the ascendant. So then which is the 11th from uh, the 8th house? It is the 6th house, right? From the Ascendant. So now the 6th house from the Ascendant is the denial of marriage. Okay. So therefore, sometimes uh, this planet in the 11th from Venus uh, may not be able to fulfill desires to that extent if it is related to those houses which deny marriage, which is, you know, the first house, Sometimes uh, from the Lagna, that which is the Lagna itself, then the 6th and the 10th. So if the 11th house from Venus falls in the 6th or the 10th from Lagna, then this is not a very great placement. Or sometimes what happens is uh, the 6th Lord or the 10th Lord from the Ascendant is sitting in the uh, 11th house from Venus. Okay, wherever, anywhere it could be. So then this becomes a bit problematic. But otherwise, in general, if there are natural benefits or Lord of the Trines from the Ascendant placed in the uh, 11th house from Venus, uh, then this is very good because uh, during the Dasha of that planet, provided, as I said, if it is not opposing Venus 
or marriage you know, which, which are the 10th and 6th from Lagna apart from these cases they will help you to develop better understanding with your spouse uh, they will help you to uh, know each other more identify each other's love languages uh, try to figure out why things are not working out how can things work out okay so and the planet in the 11th can also tell you what you should do to uh, achieve the ultimate fulfillment in your marriage okay so for example if you have the ninth lord from your ascendant ninth lord of lagna in the 11th from venus then it means that maybe if things are not working out you might try try and see by doing you know different spiritual practices maybe they work and sometimes if uh, the fifth house from the lagna has the lord of the fifth from lagna has uh, is situated in the 11th from venus then maybe you both need to develop some creative hobby and uh, do that together and then then it can work okay so if the third ninth and twelfth lords from the lagna are in the 11th from venus maybe you need to travel you know, to some good place you know and spend time uh, together in seclusion that can help you so either either ways uh, the planet in the 11th will benefit you uh, when it comes to venus unless uh, in extreme cases as i said you know now if there are malefics natural malefics from uh, the in the 11th from venus then it can uh, still help you but uh, it could make uh, things a bit difficult a bit more tough you know so for example if you have saturn in the 11th from uh, venus then it can show that you need you have to work a bit hard on your marriage this is also because uh, if venus has saturn in the 11th from itself then then uh, you can say you know like uh, saturn you know saturn has three aspects right so saturn aspects uh, the third house then uh, he aspects the seventh and then he also aspects the tenth house so this means saturn is aspecting venus in this case right uh, so that uh, that could make matter, matters even worse and that is why with saturn in 11th from venus i have seen uh, people uh, if the factors are supporting then the initial phase of their married life or relationships is not good in general you know the first two years three years uh, but then gradually there is improvement provided saturn does not fall into the extreme cases that i mentioned before and adding to that if you you are a venusian or you are a saturnian or a mercurian ascendant uh, if you fall in one of those six ascendants then what happens is saturn is lording one of the trines right in these six ascendants so then even if so then in that case if uh, saturn is in 11th from venus as the trinal lords lord for these six ascendants so taurus libra then capricorn aquarius and gemini <coughs> gemini virgo so in these six cases if saturn is not in the you know uh, i mean uh, linked to the extreme cases then it's a trinal lord and then if he's in the 11th from venus then he will still help you but with difficulties but through you know some spiritual knowledge you know maturity and you know like uh, with some forgiveness and doing some hobbies together as i said you know fifth and ninth but he will help you eventually sooner or later he will help you okay and especially if you have like moon in the 11th from venus then maybe you need to uh, have a good uh, emotional connection you know you need to spend quality time with each other rather than you know traveling or give, giving each other's gifts you know so that is something you have to check okay and similarly if rahu is there the that could make things a bit uh, precarious in the sense you know that there is always a surprise element which will stay in your marriage okay now again that could be good or bad depending on your chart but that element will be there and with ketu you know things can be a bit headless but you will need some time eventually you will figure out how to make your relationship or marriage successful okay 
so you can see uh, and you know the nature of the planet so whenever you are seeing planets from venus you have to see always two things number one is what is the natural signification of that planet okay so for example you know saturn is delay disappointment setback and all this <coughs> sorry but you also have to see which houses or which house is that planet lording from the ascendant okay so do not forget the ascendant so just don't say oh i have you know this planet in uh, that house from venus you know you also need to check so for example if you have mars you you you, you have to see what is your lagna and where is scorpio and aries so then you know mars is lording this house and that house and as lords of these houses mars is sitting in the 11th house from venus so then you know those flavors will come okay but if you activate the health, healthy traits of that planet it can help you to succeed okay so therefore uh, if you have the lords of the trines from the ascendant in the 11th from venus or you have natural benefits uh, then uh, it is ac actually very good okay so yeah i mean if you have that then see the natural karakatwas and the lordships and that will give you the answer okay and of course this has to be seen in purview of the entire horoscope as i said if venus is in eighth uh, then the 11th is the sixth house and no matter which planet is there they won't be able to help you much because that's the predicament of the sixth house right so therefore you have to understand what is actually going on and you know, just don't blindly say oh i have you know um, xyz planet in the 11th from venus and then i'll do this i'll do that you know you you have to see the overall chart and you also have to see how to what extent is a good married life uh, promised in the horoscope so for example if you have a good planet in the 11th from venus but your successive mahadashas are of you know the sixth house or the tenth house you know then the married life will still not be great because nobody can override dashas but if i assume that for you know 90 percent of the people the dashas will not be that worse even if there are good th bad things there are still some good things and then if you have these placements then they can help you okay so therefore Please see this only in context of the comprehensive analysis, seeing everything together, the divisional charts, your sun, moon, ascendant, ascendant lord and your uh, navamsha and everything basically. So just, just don't see this in isolation, okay? And uh, after this, we will uh, see the last video for this series, you know, like planets in 12th house from Venus. That's an interesting house, okay? But always remember, a planet in the 11th from Venus will fulfill your desire, most likely if the Lagna does not contradict, but it can also give you more desires. Okay, so therefore you need to be on the watch, uh, watch out because uh, you may be running, uh, you may be playing such a game where uh, you cannot stop, neither can you ever win. Okay, the game of desire is like a game which cannot, which you cannot win nor can you stop. So if somebody tells you, they like, hey i have a game for you uh, will you play it there are two rules you can't you can never stop but the other problem is you can never win so will you play that game no no intelligent person will play that game right so therefore so therefore uh, be careful when you as they say be careful what you wish for you know who knows they may be fulfilled <laughs> And sometimes we have some desires, you know, in relation to marriage and Venus and they are fulfilled sometimes. And then we are like, you know, lamenting and worrying, you know, why this happened, that happened. Well, it was our own desire. Okay. So be realistic, understand your limitations, uh, what you should expect and what you should not expect. And only then you should uh, proceed ahead. And at the end, do not forget the overall horoscope. And lastly, the Mahadashas, they are very, very, very important. Okay. You will get three to four Mahadashas uh, if you are married at around 25 to 30. So minimum three or even more. Okay. So do not ignore them. Don't ditch them and say, oh, I'm done. You know, my chart says this. So what if the Dashas are not supporting? Even then it doesn't happen. Okay. So therefore, uh, it's very difficult for somebody 
to find that they have a good planet in the 11th from venus and they have a good horoscope which supports marriage and also good dashas you know it's very difficult that is why you will see uh, it's not uh, married life is not um cakewalk for most of the people you know like if you see for 70 to 80 percent of the people married life is very difficult okay but yeah there are those 10 to 20 you know maybe 20 25 percent of the people who are lucky to uh, have all the three together so for them uh, they are destined to have a good married life for the next 50 years but unfortunately not for everybody okay but anyways now astrology teaches us how to make the best use of a bar bad bargain okay so therefore see your chart and know uh, be realistic in expecting things from your future spouse or your current partner okay so i hope that helps and yes if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you are and if you like this video then please click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is wanting to know what will happen because of having some planets in the 11th from venus and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him irrespective of which planet is there in the 11th house from venus and also if you want a consultation from me regarding a married life or career then please go to my description section okay thank you very much